everyone. Welcome to A Godly Home. Today is the start of a new collaboration called Testimony Thursday. And I have been mulling this around in my mind since we did the uh, Thankful Thursday at City Girl Homestead last November. And it was such a hit. And when it was over, I thought, well, it's too bad that this is over. And I kept mentioning to my friend Marissa at What is an Art that I wanted to do something like this. But I couldn't seem to get figured out exactly what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it and all of that. And I finally have it figured out. So this is the first one. Now, if you want to take part in Testimony Thursday, I will have a playlist just like any other collaboration and it's an open collaboration for anybody and you can either do a video and I'll put it up or you can email me your testimonies and I can share them when I do my video on Thursdays. Now um, if you share testimony through my email just let me know if you want your name said or not said because it can be anonymous as well as saying your name and also I want to be doing some prayer time so if any of you guys have prayer requests you can email those to me also and we will pray together during testimony Thursday now same deal with that you can let me know whether you want your name given or if you don't want your name given, or if it's an unspoken prayer request, or whatever it may be. Um, I will also, some weeks, not every week, be doing a little Bible reading, or a little devotional, or something like that. And um, also, if somebody wants to do like uh, a special music or something, where they sing a song, then we could post that on the playlist also. So the first thing that I wanted to tell you guys about is it's been so rainy and cold here and we've still needed to have the uh, pellet stove on most days or evenings. And my first testimony is the last couple of days the rain has finally stopped. The sun is out and it is just beautiful weather. Not hot, not cold, just perfect weather. That's why I'm sitting outside while I talk to you guys because there's no way I could stand to be inside after being cooped up for that long. So I'm very thankful for that. Secondly, I'm very thankful because my garden is doing surprisingly well, even though that was the case. It's not where it would be at other years, but it's doing surprisingly well, and I know that that's an absolute miracle. Now, if I seem out of breath or like I can't breathe, it's because we also got sick two weeks ago, and we're still struggling with it. A little bit today is actually the first day that I feel kind of good I had so much pressure in both of my ears I could not stand it there's no way yesterday I could have even done a video like this but God is good and here I am on testimony Thursday able to tell you guys that I'm feeling quite a bit better but I am very very out of breath especially when I try to do a lot of talking Okay, so today's topic is going to be ministry and gifts. Now, a lot of times I know people are like, well, I don't know what my gifts are. I don't know what God's calling me to. And a lot of times we think that we're, we need to be called to some big ministry within a church or an organization or something like that. And we get really focused on that. And sometimes even people will come to us and they'll say, hey, can you do this at the church or can you do that at the church or how about you sign up for this? And sometimes it's easy to just be like, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. 
and you can be very busy with a lot of stuff that are great things to do, but maybe they're not exactly what God specifically has for you to do. And I think when I was younger, I might have got caught up in a lot of that because I was very busy all the time. My list of stuff that I needed to do for the church and stuff was just crazy. Or even friends or family would be like, hey, can you do this or that or or whatever? I'm going to be doing it and I think you should do it with me. And I'd get all caught up in that stuff. Well, in the last year, I had this very strange situation where I thought I might have to do something that I really didn't want to do. And it wasn't ministry. It was that I had been called for jury duty. And I really didn't want to drive into the city. And I really didn't want to do jury duty. So I just prayed that I wouldn't have to do that. And I said, Lord, you know, if I don't have to drive into the city and I don't have to do jury duty, then that kind of frees me up with some extra time that I can give to you. I can give it to you and feel so much better about it than jury duty. It's just not my thing. I said, but if you're calling me to jury duty, Lord, then by all means, I will do it joyfully. So what ended up happening is I never actually got called with a date to go for jury duty. Now, it's been a year, so I don't think I will. I mean, maybe, maybe I still could. I don't know, but not at this point. So I noticed the first thing that I started to do was I started to kind of take matters into my own hands. And like there was this elderly couple I knew and like I thought, well, maybe I'm supposed to go volunteer clean for them or something like that. So I set up the first week to go over and help them out. And when I got there, I knocked and knocked on the door after I drove like an hour and they didn't answer the door. I couldn't, they just, I could hear them in there, but they wouldn't answer the door. So I was like, well, that was weird. And um, it was just that they had gotten confused and they couldn't remember I was coming and just, it was this whole big thing. But I knew that's something I had thought maybe I should do, but it wasn't exactly, you know, what God was asking me to do. That become clear. And I, I did that with several things. I, I thought I needed to do this great, huge thing, you know, with my time because I wasn't, getting a date for jury duty, and I had told God I'd use a lot of time for him. So if you want to know what God wants you to do, you know, you ask, and he always tells you. So what began to happen was I started to do just some things that I naturally do anyways. But all of a sudden, it seemed like it was a big deal, like this was making a difference in people's lives, you know. So I was like, well, that's odd. Lord, did you call me to this? And of course, yes, he did. And it seemed clear. And I went through this and, and then he, I feel like he wanted me to do something else similar and something else similar. And it just kept growing, growing, growing. But it really was just who I naturally was. And I wasn't really doing anything that I thought was big. But I kid you not, I think it's the most important thing I've ever done. And I'm just being myself. I, I missed it. Seriously, I missed for a good portion of my life what I think God actually wanted me to be doing with my extra time. And even though I would naturally do some of this, I didn't count it as ministry. And then I was always thinking I need to sign up for vacation Bible school director and all these big things. And of course, God used me like that, but I just, I wasn't getting the results, like what is actually happening now. And it's so interesting to me. And basically what he's doing with me now is hospitality. And that's always been something that I just naturally did. I didn't stop to think about the fact that it was spiritual gift. I didn't stop to think about the fact that it was a ministry and God's been dealing with me on that. And what's interesting about the hospitality that he's having me do now is a lot of it isn't even in my home. A lot of it 
actually has turned into me cooking and sending food to people that I have never met, people that I barely know, and it seems to matter so much to them. And it's interesting because there's so many verses in the Bible on this type of thing, and yet, for some reason, we downplay it. And I think the reason why maybe it's even more important in society right now than what it was uh, maybe 10, even 10 years ago, is things are getting more and more unsettled with everything. And as things get more and more unsettled with things that are going on in the world and people working all this extra time to try to make ends meet because everything's gone so high in price and, and all of this, it's like people are missing the little comforts of home. They're missing the little things that nobody has time for. And I'm just filling those gaps. That's all I'm doing. I am just filling those gaps. So this is kind of a weird topic, I know, but I prayed this morning and I felt like this is what God wanted me to share with you. It's just what's been going on with me, that this is kind of like my testimony of what's been going on with me. And as I do this stuff, I, I just, I get confirmation constantly that it's what I'm supposed to be doing. So let's read in Job chapter 31 to begin with. In verses 16 through 17 and what's going on here just a quick in case you know nothing about Job he's basically had everything horrible that can happen to him all at once he's lost everything he's lost pretty much everybody and his friends are trying to say oh it's because you know you've sinned you've this you've that and these verses are part of Job's argument against that, but they pertain to today's topic about um, ministry and hospitality. So Job chapter 31, verses 16 through 17. And this is Job speaking. Have I refused to help the poor or crush the hopes of widows who look to me for help? Have I been stingy with my food and refused to share it with hungry orphans? And of course the answer is no, Job didn't do any of that. Okay, now Matthew chapter 25. Verses 34 through 40. And this is Jesus speaking. And he says, then the king will say to those on the right, come you, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will tell them, I assure you, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. And I love those verses. And it really does confirm how important it is. Just those little, little things that you could do for people that may become so natural that you don't even think that you're doing anything. And I'm not saying everybody is gifted in hospitality, but what I am saying is it is possible that what you're gifted in, God plans on using, and maybe to you it's not a ministry, but you might see the most fruit from being yourself and doing the things 
that come naturally to you. So I don't want to give it a detail, you know, on what I've been doing because I just, I don't, I don't like to do and then say what I've done. But it, it just is so shocking to me that God can use me more doing these types of things than he can vacation Bible school, teaching Sunday school, things like that. It's just amazing to me. Now, maybe you're watching this program today, okay? Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior. And if that is the case, you come to him just as you are. There's nothing you can do to make yourself right in advance. You accept Jesus and he slowly starts to change you. I think this is a misconception, but a lot of people think, well, I need to stop this, 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 and this, and then I can come to Jesus. But that's not the way it works. You come to him just as you are. Salvation is so simple. It is as simple as A, B, C. Accept, believe, and confess. Okay? And it's like, Jesus, I accept you. I ask you to be Lord of my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Amen. That's it. You have to believe it in your heart. But that's it. That, that's all there is to it. And when you do that, and you put your faith in Jesus, then he's with you. He's with you all the time. He leads you. He guides you. When you go through bad things, he's right there with you. It really is amazing. It really is so amazing that I cannot imagine if I had to go through my life without him. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope some of you will take part. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am in way eating not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot oh, lamb of god i come